Hello everybody, it's Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 20, where we are gonna, I'm gonna take you through an introduction to jQuery, the popular JavaScript library. If you've been following along on the blog, you know that I am not an expert on jQuery, but I'm, but just been learning a lot about it in the past few months and been trying to write some tutorials and wrap my head around it and stuff. So I'm definitely not like a world expert on jQuery, but I know enough to give you guys a little intro and show you how it relates to CSS and it can do a lot to extend CSS and do cool things that CSS can't do. So. Uh, nothing in depth here, just an introduction, but let's get started. I have a really super simple web page created, like we like to use for these screencasts, uh, with just, you know, a header and it's wrapped around a page wrap and it has a couple buttons I set up here that we are going to use for some jQuery stuff. Uh, you can take a peek at the code here. Uh, just a simple page here. A div with an ID of header, an unordered list with an ID of nav, you know, a cleared float, that kind of thing. And similarly, the style sheet, just some really basic styles. Nothing I even need to explain here. But let's get started with uh, using jQuery. The first thing we got to do actually is go get it. So it's as simple as maybe just Googling jQuery here and it's at jQuery.com. The current version is 1.2.6, so we'll just click the download link here. And we'll download linked file. I think my Safari puts it on the desktop. I hope it doesn't. Let's go try and grab it again and I'll do it right. I'm not even going to edit this out. You know how it goes, folks. Sometimes things just don't go as you planned when you really want them to. If I just click it, maybe I can do view it. Oh, it goes into my downloads folder. How convenient is that? Let's move this one that isn't named weird into the JavaScript folder that I've already created for this project. And we'll grab the complete file name for it so we can reference it. Again, we'll close out of this and go back to TextMate, where we're working on this project, into our HTML file. TextMate has this handy script SRC tab. Makes this nice kind of auto macro text filler thing. And well, JS is the directory that it's in, and then we copied the file name. So there it is. That's all it takes to include the JavaScript library on your page, fresh from downloading it to putting it on your page. So it does not do anything right now. It just enables us to do stuff. So let's get started doing stuff. So jQuery can do lots of stuff that I can't even wrap my brain around, all kinds of... oh. I mean, I don't even know where to get started, but uh, as from a designer's perspective, the way I look at it is it's it's a way to capture events from the page. So wait for some kind of event to happen, in which there's all kinds of events that we can watch for, and then do something. And by do something, it's usually do something with the CSS. Add a class to the HTML. Add, add an ID. Remove a class. Uh, literally add some CSS right to the object. Uh, remove that CSS. Animate that CSS. It's really tied to CSS in, in, in that way. So uh, in CSS, we have events too. Basically, we have one event. We have hover. And we have hover on anchor elements. And we basically use the crap out of it. Let's go look at... Um, just look at CSS tricks. Uh, there's really no jQuery on this page right now. It's all CSS. It, and, 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 and look at all the actions that happen. These tabs uh, uh, flip over on hover. You know, this, there's a uh, hover event here puts this blue outline around it. The hover event here is different. The hover event on our, the little popular articles in here are different. You know, the, the hover event for the links are different. There's different uh, hover event for these which do a different thing. Uh, basically, I've, you know, you've taken that one event, that hover event with a mouse. You know, it's a really important one on a website, but it's not the only one. That's for sure. And so, you know, 
jQuery gives us, you know, we can use a hover in jQuery, but we can use all kinds of other events too. You know, we can take that click and do something with that click that's not just, you know, go to a different website or, you know, activate the link. We can use that click to, to do other things. So let's get started right away and actually writing a little jQuery to harness that click and do something. So we can, uh, just like we included the jQuery library on our page, we can write our JavaScript in a separate file and include it on the page just like that, or we can literally just write it on our page. So uh, let's do it that way, just in the same way how you can kind of, uh, you can write CSS styles right in the header of your document. You can do that script uh, with JavaScript too. You just don't include a source. Uh, and then we'll end that script tag. And then within these two tags is where we can write. So the kind of the, the, the shorthand for jQuery is this is this dollar sign. So oh look at there's my Twitter is yay. Um this is kind of how all jQuery starts. Not all of it, but for general purposes. This is a way of saying when the DOM is ready then fire off this JavaScript. And it's kind of the, the fastest, smartest way of doing things here. So function. Uh, that's this is like home base for jQuery. It's a it's a script and when the when the DOM is ready then you can then you can get started with this. It's just, you know, so these items, these page elements that we're going to reference in here. We don't have to worry about them not being ready, not being loaded. They are ready. That's what that thing said. Um, an, an older way to do this is to wait for the whole pages to load, uh, which is a little bit of different syntax up here, which is useful sometimes, uh, but usually you want to do it this way. There's even some shorthand just for this, but I think, you know, document ready function kind of, you can see it, makes sense. All right, let's go from there. So let's look down here in our unordered list. We have an unordered list with an ID of nav and uh, some different list items in it, each with a different class name. We can reference uh, any object on the page by its class name. This is how we do that in jQuery. We have a dollar sign, which stands for a jQuery object. List with a class name of action one. Looks pretty familiar, huh? Lid.action1 is just exactly how we would reference that page element in CSS. It's the exact same selector. So uh, that's how we get that object. And now if we want to say do something on a click, you just say dot click. And it's going to be a function too. It's the same kind of syntax as we wrote for our document ready function. So now we have a jQuery event that's ready to take place. It says when you click on a list item with a class name of action one, do stuff. So this is where we get a chance to do stuff. So let's do something like animate something just for fun. Uh, so we have this page wrap uh, that I believe is set to 500 pixels. You see we have a div with an ID of page wrap is set to 500 pixels and we'll go look at it in Safari this is our page wrap this the width of this entire document is 500 pixels let's um, shrink it with some animation by clicking on that thing we want the whole page to shrink so let's write that jQuery so in the exact same way that we referenced our list item with our action, our clickable thing that we want to be action, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that same thing uh, and say our page wrap. So it's just the same way of referencing that object. And what we want to do is animate it. And you don't need the function thing for animate. And what we want to do is change the width. We said we're going to shrink it to 300 pixels. So that's all we have to do. When you click the list item with a class name of action one, animate the page wrap, you know, the page element with an ID of page wrap to a width of 300 pixels. So let's save it. Let's shoot back to, we'll reload the page. 
in Safari, and we'll click on action one, and look what happens. It shrinks the whole page wrap in a cool uh, animated fashion. Pretty cool you can't do that with CSS, huh? And it makes it just like a simple one-liner in jQuery. Very cool. So we have two more list items with two different unique classes. So let's do uh, something else with jQuery that's built in that would be cool. So let's just grab the code we have that we've already built for uh, the action on our first list item. And we'll paste it in there and then change, change our selector value to 2 here. And we want to do something completely different. So let's get rid of that and save it. Uh, one of the other cool built-in things that I like to use and that's built into jQuery is toggle. Uh, toggle is a, uh, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's a, uh, to reverse the visibility of a thing. Basically it goes back and forth between display equals none and display equals block uh, in CSS. And you know how that works if you set uh, in your CSS an attribute on a page element to display none, it disappears, it's gone from the page. So uh, that can be a pretty useful thing if you want to just whisk away something on your page. So uh, let's do it with our paragraph element. We have this, all our content is wrapped in a big paragraph tag down here. So let's target that by the simple jQuery syntax P. And we'll just say toggle. I think that should do it. Let's jump over to Safari, reload the page, and see. Very cool, huh? So our, now our action number two takes the paragraph and just uh, hides it and shows it. But let's jump over back into TextMate, and we'll put another paragraph item below it. Uh, we'll make this one say, like... Hello everyone from Chris from CSS Tricks. Woo. And then we'll make the second paragraph. Goodbye everyone from Chris from CSS Tricks. So we have our two paragraph elements here. Uh, and on the bottom one, we are going to say, we'll just add some inline styling to it display none. So here's the theory of what this is going to work. Our, our, uh, our, our jQuery action is targeting paragraph elements on our page and toggling those values. It's not just going to, you know, we, we already proved that it's going to, you know, grab this paragraph element and, and toggle its display value, but it's not going to just do one of them. It's going to target every single paragraph element on the page. And now we have two of them and they have different display values. So what it's going to do is toggle the first one to, uh, the first time we click it, it's going to toggle the first one to display none, and the second one it's going to make display block. It's just going to switch those two things back and forth, theoretically, if we did this correctly. So let's reload the page, and we get the, hello everyone from Chris from CSS Tricks, and we click it and we get goodbye, and we can just click back and forth. So let's make our third action item, and we'll do it in the same way we did the other two paste in a new little jQuery snippet here and target it to our list item with a class of action three and then we want to do something completely different let's take a look at a, another one of the built-in jQuery actions which is we'll target the header and it's another way of hiding and showing things but with a little built-in animation and it's and it's one of it's going to be one of the slide functions we're going to call it slide up or it's called slide up so that's all you gotta do we'll save it jump back over to safari where we have our project open and reload the page and click on our action 3 button which should see how what it did there kinda animated and slid up and hid that uh, that div that we have an ID of header on so pretty cool So hopefully you're starting to get a feel of how jQuery works, how you add it to your page, how you get started being in an environment where you can write it, and that it's, that it's you know, in a lot of ways it's an extension of CSS. It's a way to uh, capture events that happen on a page 
uh, and and just give you a bigger, wider array of events that you can capture to to do stuff via CSS to your page. So, uh, and like I kind of alluded to earlier, can do lots of you know much more advanced things. You know, I've been playing around with a little bit of uh, uh, getting it to add content to a page. Uh, kind of Ajax style without a page refresh from external sources. So that's cool. It has some built in, uh, JSON support. I don't even know if I said that right. J S O N, which is, uh, you know, a way of like importing like JavaScript objects all kind of ready to work with. So, uh, Twitter offers up an API that, you know, uh, serves up JSON objects, so I wrote up a little page to do that. So there'll be more tutorials like that coming along. This is a really basic intro, so hopefully you got something out of that. Please shoot any questions that you have my way. Of course, you can find me and find more posts about CSS and web design and web development and all kinds of cool stuff throughout the week at CSSTricks.com. Uh, there's forums here for asking questions. This is how you can get a hold of me. This is how you can subscribe to the blog. There's all kinds of resources here, so definitely come and check that out. And special thanks to our awesome sponsor, PSD2HTML, which takes Photoshop designs, your Photoshop designs. You send it over to them. They ask you a couple questions and get started building this thing, and they'll return to you an XHTML and CSS website. Standards compliant. They can do it for WordPress, they can do it for Joomla, they can do it for uh, CubeCart, uh, you know, a bunch of different types of things. If you need an e-commerce site, they can help you out with that, that type of thing. They offer their money back. I believe they're the biggest in the business. I just saw a post just recently where there was like 50, 30, or 40, or 50 of these things, um, and, and, and their prices, their prices are competitive with that. There's some cheaper ones. But I wouldn't recommend that. This is already uh, a, a good value price service, and I know for a fact they do a good job. So if you have Photoshop documents you need turned into HTML and CSS, definitely check out our sponsor, PSD2HTML. Until next time, see you later. Bye.